Ace Podcast. You're listening to Super Co-op Squad, episode 36. Three, six, mafia. No, they're okay. Hey guys, hey gals. Welcome back to another episode of the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast, episode 36. I am one of your hosts, Johnny Mack, and I'm joined here with my fellow host, Garrett Laney. Greetings. And Joshua Gerard. You know who it is. Yep. Super Co-op Squad, that's who it is. So we are the Super Co-op Squad, guys. We love games, movies, comics, anything pop culture. Every week we sit down together, we discuss the latest and greatest in news announcements and reviews. Just give you our opinions on everything gaming related and anything we kind of just are interested in that catches our eye. Um, before we get into today's content, give you the quick old spoiler warning. If you don't want to know about what's going on in this episode, there's some things maybe that you want to jump on past or look at the timestamps on, make sure that you go ahead and look at our show notes. You can, you can find a link for those in the details and description of this episode. You can also simply go to our website, scspodcast.com. You can find them there. Um, but if you're ready, go ahead. We're not going to go. We're not going to wait any longer because you can just pause. And uh, we're going to get started. So this week, uh, we had some some pretty cool stuff and some pretty big announcements uh, Yeah, to, to discuss. So later in the show, we'll be discussing the fact that Sony has an indie uh, filmmakers program titled the PlayStation Emerging Emerging Filmmakers Program, which allows, which we'll get into and discuss a little bit later. Uh, midway through, we'll be discussing the Game with Gold and PS Plus freebie titles in July and what games stand out to us. To start things off, though, Garrett, Joshua, I know you both are very excited. I don't think that is the term. I would say emphatic. Yeah, you guys are... You guys... Emphatic. <laughs> Nintendo. So, we got it, uh, we got it. <laughs> Nintendo does it again. Nintendo is going to be... Uh, Nintendo is releasing, has announced, the SNES Classic. Uh, this is releasing uh, September 29th. It will be available at select retailers at some point in time. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> We don't specifically know that when that may be. Request it off. Camp out. Um, this is going to come with two controllers uh, priced at $79.99. Uh, there's got 21 titles it's coming with. One special one in particular we'll get to a little bit, a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, now, rather than going through each of the 21 titles that will be available, uh, if you want to know what those are, you, you can uh, go ahead and look at those in our show notes. We'll have that available for you to look, go through the entire list. Uh, Joshua Garrett, what stands out to you as far as games that really matter on this list? Oh, should, man. You want to go first? Should I just, like, speed run them off? No. I, I, uh, that's a, that's a, a lot. A couple dude. select ones. Yeah, just some, pick the ones some, you like. Pick the ones you it's like. It's going to take 10 seconds. But 21 okay. is a lot. I know. All right. All right. I, I am looking forward to a lot of these. Um. Uh, I'll save the the best one because I think we all want to talk about that. But obviously, there's the best Super Mario game ever, Super Mario World. You can finally play that Donkey Kong Country. I really hope it has all of them. I don't I don't know what you're talking about, Gary, because uh huh, uh-huh. because reasons. Uh, Secret of Mana. <laughs> I've heard that's a great game. I've never had the chance to play it, so I'm looking forward to that. Kirby Superstar. Jeez, that's amazing. That that's a great game. Oh right, I played. I'll play maybe a quarter of these, and there's a lot of them that I haven't played. Like, I've never played Earthbound. No, me either. I heard it's somewhat hard to go back to sometimes, but I don't care about that. Uh, Final Fantasy III, which is Final Fantasy VI in the U.S. Love that game. I'm glad they kept it as the traditional Final Fantasy III because that's how it came out here. But, of course, Link to the Best, my Link favorite Zelda game. Link to the Best. Link to the Best. Past. P-A-S-T, past. Uh, and, of course, Mega Man X. Yeah. The game that brought it back, reintroduced a classic franchise. Love it, love it, love it. So uh, for me, I think some of the bigger ones, Super Mario World is just crazy good classic there. Super Mario RPG, another really good one. Uh, and I like that they're kind of going a different route than they did with the NES Classic. And they have a lot more variety of games, it seems like. There's a lot of third-party titles on here. Yeah, um, but the one that stands out for me is DK, Donkey Kong Country. That was one of my personal all-time favorite platformers of all time. Oh yeah, of all time. Thanks, Rare. <laughs> they should have let you. I'm gonna let you finish Super Mario World. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I think they should have put Donkey Kong Country two in here. Um, mm. yeah, well, no, that, that's what I'm saying. I hope they have all of them, but you know, uh, two is definitely a must-play. I think. Well, I mean, I, I see your point, uh, JG, that, yeah, it is one of the best games. As a matter of fact, all three of them, DK1, 2, and 3, are, are great platformers. Yeah. But when you're, when you're calling this list, you got to look at, okay, what are, we, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get the best experiences for, for, you know, the top 21, 22 games or whatever. And if you start having sequels, you're getting the same titles, essentially, right? Like, 
Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 and 3 are very similar games. Well, speaking of t- sequels... Yeah. Street Fighter 2 Turbo no, Hyper Fighting. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, it is the be- one of the best versions. The faster versions of Street Fighter, not the slower ones. So. Yeah. So I'll just finish my my my, my thing real just real quick. So yeah, I mean, I think they just they had to be very selective and saying we can't have a bunch of sequels on here, even though people might really like that. Um, and that's where they kind of went to make sure they get a, a, each game is its own experience. Um, but there's one game we didn't announce yet, and that is the game that I think most people, the internet, is just going crazy for. And, and Gary, at least you're about, all of America is. Yeah, you're about to reveal that thing. And what? developers, yeah, the, the developers originals. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that game being Star Fox Two. You mean Star Fox Zero? No. Star Fox 2. Oh, okay. Right. So this is a never before released, at least from Nintendo, uh, game title. We have never seen this on any Nintendo console. It's been one of those like locked in the vault type things, and we're finally getting this game. Yeah, it's been uh you know playable as in like an incomplete illegal download version uh multiple times, but this is the first time it's going to be fully fledged the original content which is surprising because the fx chip that they use in some of the other games like star fox is very hard to emulate i'm told oh yeah i'm not a i'm I'm not too uh savvy yeah on that but uh these type of games are are pretty remarkable for the for the time yeah so uh and i i jumped in star fox on 64 i've not even played the first one so to be able to play the first one and then play the never before played second one i'm really looking forward to um yeah so i mean what's funny about this is that the developer way back in 1993 or 4 whenever he developed this game he wasn't even aware that nintendo was doing anything with his title you know it it had got created it got shelved for decades and now it's coming out and you know he's like wow i I had no idea they didn't contact me at all or let me know and as far as i'm aware i believe he still works for nintendo yeah (laughs) yes Oh, that's pretty crazy to me. Uh, I saw a, a screenshot or a picture when the Super NES Classic was announced and that it would have Star Fox 2. The developers working on it all went to a bar and just had drinks yeah, and party. they celebrated yep. that the, their game would see the light of day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at, at, at this point, right, it's been 20 some odd years. They they stopped. Get, they stopped. They had no hope 15 years ago. So, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Now. We've kind of discussed some of the games we like, and I think it's it's obvious if you look at this list, and again, that list will be available for you in our uh, show notes on scspodcast.com. Um, it's, it's, it's obvious this list is the greatest games. Where does this stack up in comparison to the NES Classic as far as you know the titles that are on it? Well, Joshua, being the only one that has one, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Thanks. Um, it, it's, uh, I still haven't opened it. It's still sitting on my shelf. Um. I, it's very hard to compare the two because the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo are two completely different systems, and both of them dynamically change the game when it comes to not only just how you play video games, but also the Super Nintendo. Uh, just so much more detail to games, so much more expansiveness. I mean, if you look at the like the RAM and the car, like you couldn't have a thirty, forty, fifty hour like game experience on. You know the NES very many times, but games like Final Fantasy three and Earthbound and you know Secret of Mana games you can put hours and hours and hours into yeah, a full fledged RPG. Yeah, I don't think I think the big difference is you're looking at more third party titles and a little bit more um, depth because if you look at just these twenty one games alone, like how many gameplay hours can you have combined in this you know two three four hundred hours depending on you know how big you are in RPGs. I think the only one title that would have been nice to have on here is Chrono Trigger, but I think we've seen it remade it enough times where it's okay to not be on here, I guess. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It's it's been made so many times and it's so easily and readily available that Isn't it on the phone now? I think actually, yeah. Chrono, no I, maybe. I think Chrono Cross is available on mobile devices like iPhone. I don't think Chrono Trigger is. But I could be wrong. I would argue I think it's the other way around. Maybe. Chrono Cross being the PS one title is on the phone. Mm, That's I what mean, you're saying? We have, I mean, Xbox original games can be on on mobile devices. You can literally play, you know, uh, Kotor on an iPad. You shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. But you <laughs> um, then the other thing I think about with this is, co- in comparison to the NES Classic, is that there were a lot of issues. As Garrett, you never fail to mention, and and getting one, you could not get an NES Classic. They were so in demand, and then um the demand was even was risen even higher because scalpers on ebay and other you know uh third-party um 
selling, you know, selling sites, people were scooping these things up left and right and selling them for double or triple the cost. You mind if I pour one out in your garage for a... <laughs> Just right on the floor for everyone who couldn't get one. Rest in peace, NES <laughs> Classic. Um, and then the fact that Nintendo seemed very ready to make it a collector's item by discontinuing it. A couple months later. Right. So will the will the SNES Classic suffer the same fate as far as being as, as unreadily available? Yes. Yes, it will. Nintendo has announced two things. Number one, they will be manufacturing more units for the SNES Classic compared to the NES Classic. They also said that this will be manufactured throughout 2017. They have no plans to release this going into 2018. So they're going to make more, but they're still not promising uh, it to, to last longer. So I, they keep saying their focus is on Nintendo Switch, which I can see why. Because do people that don't know about the Switch or don't care for it, do they mm -hmm. see the SNES Classic or even back at the NES Classic, do they see that as a mainstay or a home console? Because it has X amount of games. Yeah, I don't think that this this SNES Classic is considered a home console. This is something new. This is its own brand of of console, and we've seen this before from little companies that have like you know in the in the malls, like oh, get a hundred classic games, like retro game or something like that. Yeah, retro game console. So I mean, I think that's what this is. This is not. This is something for for the nostalgia of people who want to play those old school games, and because you know. And because it's been 30 years and, you know, you don't have that NES system from, from 1989 or you do and you can't hook it up to your 4K HDTV, this is a way to play those games again for those who, who gaming has maybe left behind. True, but I can kind of see where Nintendo comes from looking at if you have someone, parents, usually gift givers, if you look at a, especially back in the 80s and 90s when parents used to say the Nintendo for every system that came out. You look at a Nintendo system that's $300, and then you look at something else Nintendo-related that's $80. What are they going to buy? You say, Mom, I want a Nintendo Switch. She remembers Nintendo. She goes and spends 80 bucks. See, I don't think that'll happen too much. No kid, no no parents going to... First of all, they won't be able to find them based upon what you're saying. I'm saying if they were readily available consistently. I, I don't think so. I, I think if a parent heard someone say something like, if, if they heard a kid say, oh, I want to get a Nintendo Switch, and they wouldn't go to a store and see a, a SNES Classic and then ask what this is and tell them, oh, it's retro game from 1980s to 90s, and it's got 21, they would not get that instead of the Switch for their kid. No way. I don't know. We'll see. But they – I don't think Nintendo is going to make a, as many more. I, I think if they can – if the parents can get them, this is uh, an ideal gift, I'd say, for like maybe the younger audience, maybe 8-year-old, 7-year-old, something like that. Just some, a, a quick thing so that the parent doesn't have to spend so much on it, and they can play games. I only wish this was going to have at least Stuck. as many Switch. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have a million at launch, and Nintendo Switch had a little over a million, and that sold out just as well. So, And you know what? I also think that we – I mean, I, I don't think – I know. We know. Nintendo, Nintendo does this by design on purpose. They create demand for their product so that so – that the supply sells, and then it keeps a lot of people's minds on their consoles and games. When you're when you're still searching for Nintendo Switches three months after your releases, that's on people's minds. You keep people thinking about your console rather than them just sitting on the shelf and people think, oh, I can get it whenever I want. If you know that – if you see one, you better get it. You better get it. You know, There's no, oh, I'll get it next week or I'll read some reviews. If you see a Switch, you're going to buy one if you have any any possible want for one. And so I think they're having that same situation with the SNES Classic, in my opinion. Yeah. If anybody listening right now, if you want one of these, you need to request September 29th off or the 28th, depending on your work schedule. You need to go stand in line at some retail store, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, GameStop, and you're going to have to stand in line for this. If, or, if or there's not pre-orders. I, I can almost guarantee you there's not going to be pre-orders. I mean, we'll see. I, I, I agree with you, but I'd like to think that there would be and maybe it, it'd be ordered somehow. Um, and if there if there are no pre-orders, yeah, you're right, Josh. You, you need to go get in line. Um, and that means if your place that you're going to buy from opens at 10 a.m., that means you need to be in line the previous day at like midnight, midnight or yeah. 11, 11 p.m. Because that is how fast these things go. I mean, we've all experienced it with other Nintendo products. People I, line up for this stuff. Did it for Amiibos. Right, for toys. It's not a, it's not a matter of of how big that line is. It's a matter of how many they have in stock. You can have a store. Any of those retail stores have five. 
Right. You got 20, 30, 40 people in line. They're like, I'm sorry, we have five. Yep. And then then the store like three miles down the street has 20, but there's already 40 people in line at that point now. Yeah, I think that's a good point. It's not about how long the line is. It's about how small the quantity they're going to have is. So good point. Um, Before we move on here, let's let's, let's just flip this around a little bit. What's the title you're least excited for on this list? What what title? I mean, we all know they're great games. Which one do you just not care about? Like, ah, I could I could have did without this game. Super Mario Kart. Damn. Damn, dude. I've never played that game. And there we have so many better Mario Kart games since then. For good reason. You had to start somewhere. Uh, out of all the games, there's a few that I have not played, but Mario Kart is at the bottom. Number one, it's not really much of a solo game uh anymore compared to what we have out now number two there's only two players versus every other game after that was at least four that's all you needed back then that i understand that but going back to it now i'd rather play in almost any other mario kart what about you sir uh kirby's dream course but i don't i I don't care was that another is that a racing game i don't even know then i definitely think it's an action puzzle game. i don't need it mine is super metroid you're an ass (laughs) you <laughs> Dang. just because you lost that trivia i i just have never been into metroid or or zelda too much so for me yeah that's that's mine i've never played super metroid but i've played almost every other metroid <laughs> right so this is one i'm excited uh to play all right cool guys well um let us know what you guys think about the snes classic will you be getting one are you not caring about one are you gonna scalp one or, you know, do you think that these are just not great not. games? And let, let us know maybe what... <laughs> you better not scalp one. Let us know what your favorite games on the list are and what games you just hate. Uh, to do that, as always, guys, reach us on Twitter, at Super Co-op Squad, or by email. You can also go to the website. We now have a comment section. You can go right to that. There will be a link in the details in the description. You can click that link. It will take you right to the comment box, and we will get that comment as an email, and it will also appear on the website for you. Our first game segment of the podcast fan favorites we picked 10 rapid fire questions and each chose answers to see where we stand opposed and where we stand united in fandom play along and find out just what are your fan favorites joshua you had the pick sir we have something new we are implementing i will let you let everybody know what it is right so now every week with fan favorites guys we're going to be implementing the listener poll so you're going to get the same questions that we get there will be a google docs uh, link you'll be able to click that link in the details in the description of each episode so you can click on that days before the podcast see what the fan favorites are and vote on it and then we'll discuss uh how you guys voted and and where we stand as well you'll get a say in fan favorites for the first time in super co-op squad history so so we'll be doing that we had we had the survey up for a little bit uh these last couple of days so that we have uh we have a a pool of uh of what that is going to look like for this episode uh so joshua run down what we got this week Alrighty, so who's the best fighting robot ever? Rob. Zero. Uh, <laughs> Mega Man. The fighting robot. No, it was, it was, so, if you remember the Mega Man cartoon show, he used to be able to steal powers from his enemies. All he had to do was touch them. But this time around, if somebody touches you, you take something from them. It could be by accident, it could be on purpose. It could be something you didn't want at all, but you're getting something from somebody else. This is fan favorites, Mega Man edition. I didn't ask for that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Right. So somebody touched, bumped into you or whatever, but now you're going to choose the one you would rather have. You would rather take this and not the other one. So did someone give you a really bad flu or did they give you a hangover? The flu. Flu. Uh... I'd rather be hungover. Did your legs all of a sudden go numb? Or did your funny bone just really hurt all of a sudden? Funny bone. Numb. I'd rather have my legs go numb. Would you rather black out? Or would you rather go blind? And then keep in mind, so in the Mega Man show, he temporarily took powers from people. So this is not a permanent fan fave. This is you are temporarily having this. This ailment. Well, they might not all be ailments. So Okay. Uh, blackout. Blackout. <laughs> Blackout. Uh, do you get the non-stop hiccups or you have constant gas? Gas. Gas. <laughs> Give me the gas. Uh, are you suffering from vertigo or are you suffering from am- <laughs> am- am- amnesia? Yeah, it's a different one. 
Are you suffering from vertigo? Are you suffering from insomnia? Insomnia. 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 That's the place of Final Fantasy <laughs> uh, Constant hyperactivity. You're always hyper or you're extremely lethargic. Hyperactive. Lethargic. I'd rather be hyper. Did you get diarrhea? Or do you have a really weak bladder? You gotta pee all the time. Like every five minutes. Weak bladder. Eh, weak bladder. Weak bladder. Uh, do you have a really bad twitch? Or a tick? Or do you have a pimply face? Pimply face. Pimply face. <laughs> I'd rather have a twitch. So I'm sorry. Uh... Are you growing obscene amounts of hair on your body, or would you rather be completely and utterly bald? Bald. Bald. You know how beautiful this hair is? I'm not going bald. <laughs> you can give me some more more hair. And lastly, what do you feel like you just really got punched right in the face? Or do you feel like you got belly flopped in the face of a pool? Belly flopped? Mm, I'll take a punch in the face. I think I can take the belly flop. All right, guys. Well, that was it. Break it down. Ow. Yes. So, flu or hangover? All right. So, I, the hangover is just, I don't want to deal with that, man. Like, Hangovers are bad. Hangover doesn't mean you're throwing up, though. No, there are much worse things than throwing They're up. They're also much less. There's no depiction. So, I'd rather maybe throw up or maybe just have a really so, bad headache than be sick with the flu. So you chose hangover. Garrett, both of us chose flu. Yes. Our listener response, 77.8% of people chose flu. So only 22% of you, you Joshua people, chose to get a hangover. We're partying. Oh, I'm sorry. That's actually reversed. 77.8% said hangover. 22% said flu. So, Ooh, so yeah, they're with you, JG. Yeah, we party. <laughs> Y'all come hang out. We're all going to go have a good time. <laughs> all right. So uh, numb legs or funny bone? I, I do not want to get hit in the funny bone. Funny bone is no funny. No. Funny bone's not fun, but at least I can walk. Like numb legs, you can't walk. So you, yeah. just, you know, you touch that person and then. I'll just start singing that Linkin Park song. <laughs> I become so numb. <laughs> I can't feel you. So just for reference, I ch you guys both chose numb legs. I chose funny bone. Uh, it's almost split here. 55% of our listeners, uh, they chose numb legs. 44% chose funny bone. Ha <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right so would you randomly black out or would you rather go blind i think we all chose black out black out yeah i mean black out i mean how much time am i going to lose a couple of minutes i there there's no way to know Mega Man has his powers for x amount of time no pun Mega intended. Man. <laughs> no pun intended um is, this could be an hour this could be a couple minutes who knows but i'd rather just black out and just wake up yeah whenever yeah rather much. than just not being able to see and freaking out for whatever I'm doing. Yeah, much much like us, most of our listeners also chose blackout. Seventy seven point eight percent chose blackout. Twenty two percent chose going blind. All righty, moving on. Uh, non stop non stop hiccups or constant gas. Look, if I got a fart, I got a fart. Okay. Sometimes it just feels really good to just let one loose. Yep. And then also the way I look at it is I can pass off my gas to someone else. You know, like. Hey, bro, like, no, what, you, what, sounds... what are you doing? Did you just did you just fart in here? Why would you fart? That's so rude. I just make this guy feel all bad. You're the guy in the elevator that farts and then looks at the other person all weird. Like, ugh. knowing it was you. I actually did that one time in class. That's, see? I, I farted and I blamed the guy next to me and everyone believed me. That There you go. <laughs> and uh, most of the people believe me. You know, 55% Sorry, Josie go along with passing gas and 44% of our listeners say they'll take hiccups. Yeah. No, I'd rather not get interrupted in my own sentence. Um, all right. You suffering from vertigo or insomnia? Insomnia, man. I get more stuff done. I mean, sure. Yeah. I mean. I don't think you understand what insomnia. You can't sleep. Yeah, but you're, you're tired as have you, crap. Have you ever been awake to where it hurts? No. That's insomnia. Like it, you're so sleepy that your, your entire body is in pain. Go to sleep. You can't. <laughs> Do you not get what insomnia is? You um, can't. Yeah, insomnia is not cool, man. I, I don't. I've never had insomnia, but I have forced myself to stay awake for over like two days playing a video game. It sucks. It hurts. It hurt. It physically hurts you. Um. So yeah, I just figured I was never tired. 
Yeah, no, you, you don't know. And and apparently our listeners don't know either because seventy seven point eight agreed with Garrett and shows right Insomnia. Oh. Uh, and twenty two percent said they take vertigo along with me. No, I chose insomnia. I'd rather not get all dizzy and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't think I'd want to deal with insomnia. It's a terrible thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, consistently hyper or extremely lethargic. Give me all the energies. So I think we all chose hyper, right? You didn't. Nope. Wow, you're weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I chose be what's, what's, what's your reason there, uh, 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 Eeyore? I'll just stay in bed. Oh, like I'm, just, I'm already lethargic. I'm, I'm just garrisoning nothing changed. at home. I don't know. It's just my lot. Now. Yeah, there's, there's being tired. There's being dopey. He's a little bit of both. He the wonderful thing thinking. about Joshua. Joshua, wonderful thing. Oh, He's trying to stay up, play video games. He doesn't know what to do with a thing. <laughs> bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun. All right, that's Tigger. what that's what I meant. Be. You have the you have Tigger and you have Eeyore there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Garrett, you chose lethargic. Joshua, you and I chose the correct answer. Uh, hyper <laughs> and. Uh, apparently, every single one of our listeners chose the same thing. They, they 100% grew, on us? 100% hyper. Oh, hyper? Every single person. So, yeah, you're wrong, Garrett. It's called a hyper you're, beam for a reason. You're li- <laughs> lethargic beam. <laughs> you're literally the only person who chose to be lethargic. Hey, that's good. <laughs> I'm original. Uh, all right. What else we got? Uh, so you got the squirts, you got diarrhea, or you have a weak bladder. I almost went for diarrhea. <laughs> yes, you did. I almost did, just so I could just be on the toilet playing Switch, playing <laughs> Zelda. See, but then there's that time where you're like just in bed, you know, just relaxing and randomly just, oh, wait, I thought that was a fart. It wasn't. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Okay. <laughs> you got to waddle to the bathroom because you weren't sure if you wet yourself. <laughs> the thing I think about diarrhea, though, is that when you have bad diarrhea, there's no sitting on the toilet looking at your phone and like, playing a game <laughs> no. you're in trouble man like your body is like oh gosh and you're you... rest you're resting on your wrist with your elbow and your knees yeah. just like <laughs> just sitting there waiting for this to end like <laughs> damn it i could be doing so much other things like sleeping right now yeah oh yeah so no i, I won't get any more detail but no yeah weak bladder is the way to go because i mean i could just go pee again and again and then also like it's not as embarrassing to go pee but sitting down in the toilet and just just bleh, 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 just no. Is that Taz? <laughs> yes, that's what I <laughs> Shut up. Um, and apparently our listeners agree with me. Uh, weak bl- And well, actually, all three of us chose yeah, weak bladder. Yeah, we all chose uh, so weak 77.8 decided to go weak bladder. 22% decided to pick diarrhea, weirdos. What we got? Yep. All right. So would you rather have a, a twitch or a tick or a pimply face? So you got this tick, right? You got this tick, right? You just got to look at your opponent's stamina and say, back up, back up. <laughs> mind your business. Mind business. Just mind, mind your business. business. <laughs> so you guys chose Twitch. I chose Pimply I, Face. I chose Pimply Face. I'm, oh, oh, I, I have so many freckles on my face, I imagine all my freckles turning into pimples. Yee. And I do not want that. Now, sometimes it's fun popping pimples. That it's never fun. Sometimes it's fun. <laughs> when is that fun? Weirdo. When that's, I have pimples and I pop them? That's weird, bro. That's really weird. Okay. So, yeah, I chose pimply face because, I mean, you know what? Much like you didn't want the hiccups, Joshua, because you don't want to have your sentence interrupted. I don't want to be talking and do that. Uh, uh, th- yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, roll your neck and snap. I don't want anything like that. So that's why I chose that. But sadly enough, um, no one really chose my choice. 88% chose Twitch twitches or ticks, and only eleven percent chose pimply face. Oh, you and me are in the minority there. Yes, we are. And lastly, second to lastly, would you rather grow obscene amounts of hair or be completely bald? I can't go bald, dude. See, when I even think, if it's temporary. Basically, if I go bald, I'm pretty. Much, I'm just one punch man. So I'll go <laughs> uh, with this that. Guy feels like he looks like Saitama. Yeah, dude, you think you look like everybody. I, I do. You I do. don't. I have one of those faces. You're, you don't have one of those faces. <laughs> Apparently, you oh think you have one gosh. of those heads now, too. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. When I think obscene hair growth, I'm thinking, like, hair in my ears, like, ridiculous hair on my knuckles, hobbit Back. feet. Wolfman. Yeah, I got I got it coming out of my nose. Like, nah, bro, that's too much. You're not like bobo, bobo, bobo. Not like that. I don't but... I don't want all that nonsense, no. You're like Wolfman. Did you really just drop a bobo, bobo, bobo reference? I did. My, <laughs> my brother better be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that's that's my that's my shtick on that um so listener poll uh 33 went obscene hair growth 66.7 excited with me on being completely bald bald is sexy if you're already bald i mean the answer was easy for you i mean look at bruce willis bruce willis yeah steve harvey 
Uh, wow. I don't think it works very well with Steve Harvey. Wow. Have you ever seen the man with hair? Yeah. Well, Steve Harvey show. Like Sam, 40 years ago. Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Steve Harvey's cool, bald. Uh, he's cool. He's, I, he's I like cool cat. Steve. I do too. Steve Harvey show. Yeah. All right. And lastly, you feel like you've been punched in the face by Garrett's baldness. <laughs> or do you feel like you belly flopped in a pool? Um, I'll take a belly flop. I can take it. Yeah, my face is too pretty to get punched. So belly flopping hurts, and that's that, pa- that pain. You got pimples all over your face. That pain stays with you. I'll get punched in the face that and just have it have it be over with. That pain stays with you too. It, it, when when I it get doesn't black sting. Eye. It's, it's it's a different type of pain, and, and belly flops those those sting. Those I don't sting think you've been bad. punched enough. You haven't been punched by someone that knows how to punch you. Eh. Punching hurts, dude. Getting eh. punched with a solid punch in the eye, it ain't good feeling. No, oh, sock and boppers. They're more fun than than a pillow fight. (laughs) So, uh, listener poll, 66.7 decided to take a belly flop. 33% decided to get punched in the face. Uh, Sometimes you just got to do it. Not too kind to our listeners today, are we? You're not too kind to your listeners. This this wasn't my poll. (laughs) All right. Well, that is a fan favorite for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you take part in next week's uh, listener poll. That'll be available. There'll be a link in the details in the description of this episode for you to go to. You can also find that uh, on our website, scspodcast.com. There'll be a link for that website as well. And you can also find it. There'll be posts for that on Twitter. So be sure to follow us on Twitter to find that listener poll and possibly give us themes for an upcoming week. All right. So games with gold and PlayStation Plus freebies for July. Um, I thought this was a pretty good list this uh this month, and we'll go break it down for you very quickly. So, games with oh, gold. let's break it down. I did that for Chandler. Oh, there, there we <laughs> go. Uh, <laughs> so, games with gold. We've got a uh, grow up, uh, run bow. I'm sorry, uh, we have grow up, which is priced at nine ninety nine. Run bow, which is priced at fourteen ninety nine. Cana Lynch two dog days fourteen ninety nine, and Lego Pirates of the Caribbean priced at nineteen ninety nine. A total of fifty nine dollars and ninety six cents. For the retail pricing. So breaking these these games down, guys, anything stand out to you that you like? Um, Really, the only thing I'm actually excited for is LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, which I have already played uh, back on the 360, but it was actually a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to Runbow. I've seen some of the trailers for it. It's looks like it's a, a unique title that was like uh, WiiWare or something like that on Wii U, but now it's coming to Xbox. And it looks like it's just a fun, frantic multiplayer game. Uh, you have nine people you can play up to. So, like, like Speedrunners is like a great little indie title that we've been playing. I feel like Runbow is going to be something very similar to that in scope as, you know, couch co-op on the same screen or multiplayer online. Just having a bunch of fun goofing around. It's a little stick to it, too. Yeah, I, I agree. I was going to say Runbow for the exact same reason. I really, really enjoy Speedrunners. I've been to a party or two already, like birthday parties or just little gatherings, and people cut it on and... The whole room has fun just playing the game. We had about 12 people playing, so you know the, 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 the winner would stay on. The other three people passed the controller, and it was a lot of fun just both playing and, and watching. So if it's anything like that with nine players as this game can play, I, I'm very interested in that. Um, and then also Grow Up for me. I like platformers, and it looks very different. It has a, a kind of quirky feel from what I've seen about Grow Up, so that's another one I got my eyes on. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Pirates, though, Garrett. No? Personally, no. I don't. I think it was... One of those beginning of the downfall of the the uh, the Lego. Traveler's Tale games. I, I disagree. I don't think it was. I had a lot of fun. I 100% at the game. Um, Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I used to do that with Lego games. It was a lot of fun. Easy nice. to do. I only did that with the uh, the original one, Lego Star Wars Two. Ah. That's the actually the only Lego game I think I've played. You are missing out on Lego Batman. I, I know I am. And the the <laughs> Lego Marvel superheroes is quite excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah, not the Avengers one. I'm not no, a fan of that one. No, I agree. Um, so yeah, and I, we've all kind of just stayed away from even speaking about Kane and Lynch too. There's a reason. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it had its time, but it I feel did like, it, okay. Did it have its time? The I played the first game and it was wasn't too great. The second game improved on a lot of stuff, and then they added. Uh, I mean, that game is known for its bank heist mode and multiplayer, which came out prior to Payday Two being a big uh, thing. Payday 2 is fun. So it did have some fun modes when they're bank heists, and then Payday 2, you know, had a similar idea and perfected it in a lot of different ways, but you know would have been, of Kane and You know what would have been better than Kane and Lynch 2? Kane and Lynch 3? No. Army of 2. 
Army of Two went downhill after the first game. Ooh. In my opinion. I feel Army of Two was the second one was one of the better games. I but, didn't like 40th Day. So I did. I did a lot. But with Kane and, Kane and Lynch, I feel that it, it in those middle middling years of the Xbox 360, it had its time and place because local co-op was a still a big thing, but also having the ability to have online co-op was was kind of new ish still. Um and so people people like those kind of things. And I did, you know, I played a lot of Resident Evil that way. So yeah, it had its place, but that, that that time is gone. It's hard to think of a time when online co-op was newish, right? But <laughs> there it was. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, Xbox there. Um, with PlayStation uh, Plus, we've got a few games that I think are pretty interesting. So we've got Until Dawn, uh, priced at nineteen ninety nine. Uh, the Game of Thrones series, uh, the entire Telltale series for nineteen ninety nine. Tokyo Jungle, priced at fourteen ninety nine. Darkstalkers Resurrection, priced at fourteen ninety nine. And Elemental Four. Or elemental, yeah, elemental, elemental four, right? No, it's elemental, but the four is replacing the a at the end. Okay, so elemental with a four with the last. It's just elemental. There we just, go. Just what, elemental. Whatever. Eight ninety nine. <laughs> the Vita title. So man. And then uh, don't die. Don't Mr. die, Mr. Mr. Robot. Robot. <laughs> Price that uh three ninety nine. So that brings the grand total to eighty two ninety four. Jeez. Yeah, quite a bit of uh retail pricing there. Granted, you get six games usually every month on playstation so that's why the dollar amount's gonna be a little higher yes so you know what to, to be honest nothing really stands out to me too much maybe tokyo jungle um a little bit but other than that i would recommend to both of you if you've not played it already until dawn i really? played it yes until dawn is a, is a really fun game it's one of those games where choices you you make change the story it's kind of a not survival horror, but something's going on. A uh, group group of group of kids, teenagers, really get trapped. Uh, go to a a cabin in the woods type thing. Stuff goes bad, and uh, they're just trying to survive. Yeah, from a psychopath. It's a psychopath. Yeah, it's uh, how many? Is it like eight or nine? Kids, uh, kids or, or so, something and, around there. And yeah. throughout the game, the choices you make, all of them can survive, or maybe all of them can die. Yeah, I remember when this was a a demo for the PlayStation Move prior to the PlayStation Move coming out. Yes. One of the big things, because you can interact with the game, there's make out, and the whole point was to use the Move uh, controller to do different things, and they gave an example of you using the Move controller to unzip her jacket, because things were getting a little steamy, and then that got scrapped for, for years to come, and then it finally came back, and I its own thing. That. Yeah, there's a, there's even a, a PlayStation VR uh, mode to the game. Oh, wow. This, I think, would be a good thing to stream. It, it's funny that you recommend this game to us. Yes. Being the pansy you are for survival <laughs> scary <laughs> games. That's a little harsh. It's a different type of horror game, though. It's not... It's thriller. Yeah. It's more of a suspenseful thriller. Nice. I always remember that meme you posted a while back on the, on the, on our Twitter where it showed uh, like a, a top-down grid of like a house, and it said like me playing an action-adventure game. And it showed the grid of like, you know, the map of where your character goes. And you went to every nook and cranny, like all around the map. Yep. And then like me playing a survival horror, which is like a straight line, like it's cutting <laughs> it through was, the walls. Yep, cutting through the wall. Nope, trying to get to point, yeah, point to, B to the exit. now. <laughs> um, uh, that, uh, another game I'm actually looking forward to. Not, sorry, not to hug up all the time. Uh, Darkstalkers Resurrection. It's a fighting game I never really had the chance to play, but it's got some interesting characters. Morgan, of course. Uh, I forget the wolf's name. Finra? No. No, it's like J. Bane or something. I don't know. I he, just, he, look, he looks cool. I just threw out like a, a generic uh, like werewolf name. That was all. not. Finra's are pretty like. Finra? Finra, yeah. Finra, no. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. No, you're wrong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's funny just think, think, talking about Darkstalkers. It's one of those games where the some of the characters have out overshadowed the game. Like I think I think if you showed Morgan to many people, they'd know the character. Yeah. No clue what game she came from. Yeah. To be fair, probably a lot of it's a lot of them probably know her from Marvel vs. Capcom. That's true. But uh, yeah, I don't think a lot of people would know Dark Soccer's the game uh, outside of the characters. Yeah, agreed. I think his name is John Talbain. There we go. That's what it's showing on. Yeah. On the Google search. I never played Dark Darkstalkers. I uh, never really got into it. Um, but the one game that I am interested in is Elemental. Because I do like puzzle games. And this is essentially your uh, little fuzzy little sprite. It's four elements that are bound together on a journey to shape life itself. And, and then you just when you needed it most, it vanished. <laughs> 
And then uh, you used four different <laughs> elements to to move and navigate throughout the world. So it's a little small little indie game, but stop! You guys always laugh at each other when I'm like doing something. It's okay. I'm not. I'm not that funny guy. Uh, a hundred years went by, and my brother and I found a <laughs> new elemental, <laughs> a new fuzzy. <laughs> I, I don't get the reference. An Wait, elemental you, named Aang. Not... <laughs> what? He doesn't get it. You haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender? No. And although his I... airbending skills are great. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen The Last Airbender. Bro. It. Bro, it's a really good. It's a fantastic series. It, it's one of the one. Of, I'd say it's probably top five for me, like Western animation shows. Like I know what we're doing. We should have a little marathon. Sorry, all right. sorry, you were saying. Go ahead, finish up. No, I'm done. I'm okay. very, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not. That was funny. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, those are the games for uh, Gold and PlayStation Plus titles that are going to be free in the month of July. If there are some titles that you liked in there or you know you don't care about or whatever, let us know. You know reach out to us on our Twitter at Super Co-op Squad, or you can let us know what you think on our website, scspodcast.com. There'll be a link for that. There's also going to be a link directly to our comment section on the website. So a, a quick, quick, a quick click on your uh, phone or listening device, and you'll take you right there and drop us a quick message. All right, guys, well, it's time for our second gaming segment, Gamer Trivia. So every week, two of us go head-to-head in a best-of-five trivia contest. The winner stays and plays and, you know, enjoy some bragging rights for the next week. The loser makes next week's trivia. Joshua, I believe you went down swinging last week. I have never been more subtly disappointed in myself for not knowing Bully. a bunch of Rockstar LA games. Noir. A, a lot of Rockstar games. I... I was very disappointed in Midnight you Club? because I, I thought I had devised a pretty cool <laughs> thing and you just, you ruined it. Uh-huh. Did you, <laughs> you're gonna, no, no, don't, don't acknowledge it. <laughs> so what do you got for us this week, man? All right. In lieu of a new edition of Netflix coming later this July. Okay. Anybody? I, was, I thought you were going to go Death Note, but that doesn't come out till August. Nope. It is a nice, gritty, gory tale of one whipping man going against Castlevania. a vampire. Hmm. Now, you know I've never played Castlevania, so I feel like this is... Castlevania! This is, I did not know... <laughs> I don't know you never played Castlevania. I've only played one. Well, let's see what no, I got. No, no, I played three. Trivia is not derived based on me three trying games. to get back at you. Not Castlevania 3. But, either way, we are doing Castlevania trivia. We're not talking just Castlevania 1. This is just Castlevania in general. Castlevania. Yeah. Really looking forward to that Netflix series. Yeah, it should be good. Let's do this. I, I, I know probably slightly more than you do, but that's not... I don't even know one main character's name. You know one. Okay, I know Alucard. Okay. Did you please tell me you butchered his name on purpose? I don't know how to say he, it. He, he, he didn't... I don't it's play okay. the games. It's okay. It's okay. Let's move on. Alucard. Alicard. Uh, Alicard. Alicard. Okay. Castlevania trivia. Pre- prepare to die. That, this isn't Dark Souls. Question number one. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is not the only game where you have Alucard in gameplay. He was a spiritual helper in what other Castlevania game? Is it Castlevania 1? A. Is it B. Castlevania 2? C, Castlevania 3, or D, Castlevania 4. I have Garrett's answer. I have a 25% chance. You know how to do math. (laughs) Johnny, I have your answer. Garrett, you said the answer was B, Castlevania 2. Johnny, you said Castlevania 3. The correct answer is C, Castlevania 3. And I erased that to put the... <laughs> Gotta trust your gut. <sighs> that is one point for you, Johnny. Garrett, that is incorrect. <laughs> Number two. Which of these are not a traditional sub-weapon in a lot of the Castlevania games? Is it A, the stopwatch? B, the cross? C, the axe? Or D, the holy water or e they're all sub weapons in 
a lot of the games. I mean, I hate when you guys do E's <laughs> so much. Mm. Tricky, tricky. <laughs> I have Garrett's answer. I have Johnny's answer. You have both. Decided to go with E. They are all sub weapons in many of the games. The correct answer is E. They are all uh, sub weapons. All right, cool. So, Johnny, that is two. Garrett, you have one. You're on the board. Yay. Fun fact numero uno. The American release of the original Castlevania was on May 1st, 1987, and it coincided with the 90th anniversary of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula novel. That's Ooh. cool. That is a nice fun fact. All right. Question number three. You just toot your own horn? <laughs> question number three. Not for the trivia, just that was a cool fun fact when I was looking up stuff. Question number three. Which of these games did not feature Simon Belmont, the main vampire hunter? Is it A, Castlevania, B, Castlevania 2, C, Castlevania 3, or D, Castlevania 4? Which of these games did not feature Simon Belmont? I have Garrett's answer. And I have Johnny's answer. Johnny, you said A, the original Castlevania did not have Simon Belmont. Garrett, you said D, Castlevania 4 did not. The correct answer is C, Castlevania 3. I almost went with that again because it, it, it gave me my, my number one. But okay. It really would have been beneficial if I played one through four. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're both wrong. <laughs> so, Johnny, you have two points still. Garrett, you have one point. Question number four. How many handheld Castlevania games are there for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS? Monster. App apparently, you guys don't like Castlevania. Is it A, 8... B, 7, C, 6, or D, 5? Um, am I allowed to ask a follow-up question? No. I'm going to ask anyway. Does 3DS count? I will repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> how many handheld games, how many handheld Castlevania games are there for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS? Okay, okay. Is it A, 8, B, 7... C, 6, or D, 5? I have Garrett's answer. I have Johnny's answer. You both picked D. <laughs> <laughs> there are five games, and you both are incorrect. The correct answer is B. There are seven. Game Boy Advance has Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow. And they remade the original Castlevania as part of the classics, and the DS had... Portrait of Ruin, Order of Ecclesia, Order of Ecclesia and uh, Don of Sorrow. Ah. So you're both <laughs> incorrect. The score is still two, Johnny, one, Garrett. Fun fact number two. Symphony of the Night was the first Castlevania game to separate the stage-by-stage -stage level transition where it's one, two, one, three, one, four. So essentially the formula for Super Metroid was implemented in a lot of ways and now dubbed Metroidvania because both of the styles are unique to how the stage transitions from game to game. You guys are just like, bring on the trivia. Okay. No, I was trying to comprehend the fun fact. I didn't I didn't get it. So in the original Castlevania games, it was stage one one, stage oh, one yes. two. Yes. And Symphony of Night it was, was the first Castlevania big... game to break the stages. Gotcha. Where it's just one big epic adventure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Question number five. The MSX, which is a Microsoft game computer in the 80s, was home to the first Castlevania game in Europe and its quote-unquote second one in Japan. It was practically the original Castlevania with a bunch of extra content, such as needing skeleton keys to progress. What is the name of this version of the game? Is it A, Vampire Killer? B, Dracula's Curse? Is it C, Simon's Quest, or is it D, Vampire's Castle? What is the European name for the Castlevania game? I have Garrett's disappointed answer, shaking his head over there. I have Johnny's answer. You have both picked C, Simon's Quest. The correct answer is A, 
The game was called Vampire Killer. Dracula's Curse was actually Castlevania 3, and Simon's Quest was Castlevania 2. That was the name of those games. So, Johnny, that is two, because you got that incorrect. Garrett, you still have one. The bonus question, gentlemen. You know how this works? You have to bet a point or two points. Or no points. Or no points. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a twist. So this is going to be a tricky question. So very similar to Johnny's past trivia. Every answer that you give me that is correct, you get a point. Every answer that you give me that's incorrect, you lose a point. You must name me another Castlevania title and its subtitle that has not already been mentioned in this trivia. We talked about probably eight or nine or ten different Castlevania titles. Name me as many as you can that has not been mentioned today for any platform. Again, I will need the name of the game and its subtitle if it has one, which I think all of them do after the numeric Castlevania games. I have Garrett's answer. Johnny, I'm going to read your answer because you didn't give one realistically, which means you probably bet zero points. Johnny, you have sent me a gif <laughs> of the count from Sesame Street looking uh, up at the uh, sky uh. and then just veering off screen. And in your subtext, you put, I want to suck your blood. <laughs> ah, ah, Back on the ah. GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. Garrett, you have given me two answers. You have told me Super Castlevania and Castlevania Judgment. So, both of those are correct. Super Castlevania, Castlevania 4. Very similar titles. Ah, uh, did it count? Well, I, you said be, the subtitles there. Because it technically is not a subtitle, I'm not going to count it against you. Okay. Because you didn't put Castlevania 4 in it. But you didn't say Super Castlevania 4. You just said Castlevania 4. Exactly. I didn't know they were the same. That's okay. Don't worry about it. So the points, Johnny, you buckled down and bet zero points. That's smart. Garrett, you bet one point. My one point. Score is tied. Two to two. Hi, Johnny. So we're going to go to the... Hi, Garrett. Super, ultra, salty, sudden death question. Oh, live to fight another day. Are you gentlemen ready? Yes. No. So the answer is going to be one answer. You... Both have well. One of you just has to get it right, and the other one has to get it wrong. Essentially, it's points. Do or oh, die. We're tied. No, you're you're tied. So it's essentially do or die. Whoever's the first one to get it right with the other one getting it wrong. So the first question. It's a good question. Yes, it is. What is the most recent Castlevania game to come out? Just talking in the U.S. Do we say it or text it to you? You text it to me. House of Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The most it. recent game to come out. Most recent Castlevania game. Okay, you're gonna leave it at that. Huh? That's all I'm gonna say. You gotta give me the full title, or it's gonna be wrong. No, I don't. I give you half a title. It'll be fine. Dang it. Gary, you put just Castlevania. Just Castlevania. <laughs> Johnny, so we have a group chat. <laughs> Johnny sent it to the group chat as <laughs> Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. And that actually is correct, Johnny. What? Lords, Lords of Shadow 2 is the most recent Castlevania game to come. Is it? It is. Because the most recent one's Castlevania on the NES Classic. No. 
Yes. That doesn't count. Sorry, Gary, but your answer was incorrect. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, we a game didn't up, release right? a compilation with a bunch of titles released for a classic system. Yes, and among that, it was the most recently released thing that came out after Castlevania Lords of Shadow. All right, all right. Nope. All right. Nope. Yeah, okay. All right. We can agree to disagree. I guess we will. <laughs> so, Johnny, after all that salt and all that, uh, all those evil glares, you have taken over Castlevania trivia this week. I like my 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 meat well seasoned. Well, salty, salty, and all. Wasn't well seasoned two seconds ago when you were giving me shade. It was still salty, <laughs> but right. I'll take my W. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, cool. Well, that means I'll be seeing you next week in trivia, Joshua Garrett. You'll be on trivia duty. I'm sorry. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> you only had one win and a, a win-win streak. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed trivia. And hopefully you did well. Let us know what you thought of trivia on our email, uh, contact at scspodcast.net, or you can comment on it, comment to us uh, on our website, scspodcast.com, um, or you can go to our show notes. There's a details in the description link for our comments and let us know what you thought of today's trivia. Maybe give us some tips or themes for next week. We here at the Super Co-op Squad would like to take a moment here to thank all of our supporters and subscribers. Subscribing to our podcast is the only way to make sure you don't miss an episode. Remember to tell all your friends and family to check out our podcast. Thanks for listening. So, uh, Sony, we are, we've, we've known for a while now they're dedicated to indie games, uh, but now we also know they're de- dedicated to indie filmmakers. So the makers of the PlayStation, uh, they're launching a new initiative uh, titled the PlayStation Emerging Filmmakers Program. Uh, this program allows writers and filmmakers to pitch ideas to Sony in hopes that their idea will be used to create a pilot episode and possibly launch a new franchise for Sony and its viewers. Uh, as we know, Powers was kind of launched the same way, uh, exclusively uh, created for uh, for Sony, uh, the superhero uh, comic that was adapted. Uh, and pretty much anyone can submit ideas, and you can do that right now, as a matter of fact. And entries don't have to be any type of any type of licensed product by Sony. Uh, just whatever you want off the cuff, your own intellectual property uh thoughts on this gentlemen so i'll I'll tell you what i think i think this is this is a good idea for sony and not not just for sony but for all film film industry uh production companies to do there's a large amount of great ideas out there from people who don't have an opportunity to get in on the ground floor and this is a good opportunity to to kind of bring in some of that new talent i agree yeah there there is so much storytelling to be done but usually that is behind the lens of one person one brain one you know one person's vision and for for sony to be able to reach out and all these people be able to reach out and say hey we'll take anybody's idea essentially we'll just make it fair game let us know what you what you have what you think what you have written down and we're going to take that and potentially make something out of it whether it's we take the script we take just a, a fraction of an idea but I don't know if they're saying we need help coming up with new ideas or we want to include everyone else to have these ideas. Not much else to add to uh, what both of you gentlemen are saying. Uh, There's a lot of creativity out there. And so it'll be interesting to see what sticks and what we get seen. What is uh, what sees a lot of day. I think. um, I think this is a good decision for Sony, like I've stated before. Um, One of the things you put this is this is one of your segments, JG. You'd ask the question. Is this something where, you know, they're are they willing to step outside and source for talent because like a necessity or or are they hurting? I think that this is something they're doing because they realize there's a lot of potential out there. You know, we went to PlayStation Experience last year. We've seen the just tons of games that they're coming that that are releasing on the Sony console. And they realize that in this 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 amount of talent is in gaming. There's gotta be this, there's gotta be even more talent in in, in movie making. Mm-hmm. And people aren't People aren't going to grab it, so this is them doing that. And I, I like this a lot. So another way I look at it is with the tremendous uproar in uh, podcasting, uh, putting yourself out there on social media, putting yourself out there yourself out there on like YouTube and creating your own channels, your own networks, your own shows. Essentially, you can take that r- creativity and essentially turn it into something a lot bigger. So if someone's going to say, hey, we want to make a pilot, let's see if anybody, any amateurs or anything out there have any better ideas or good ideas or things that we have a vision that we can help them realize, let's go ahead and do that. And I, I'm excited to see uh, how they're going to introduce 
these newer ideas into full scope to potential pilots. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned in or content creators, you know, like podcasters, YouTubers, streamers, uh, even people who create music and independently. And we've seen in the last four to five, six years, a huge just surge in the amount of people who get their content directly from the people and not so much from production companies. Um, YouTube is just, I mean, you, you see the numbers that, that happen sometimes overnight for a video. And man, publishing companies and production, company, production companies, they salivate thinking, damn, I wish I could get someone to pay attention to one of our trailers or something that we make this way where it just overnight it's, an, it's, an, it's a sensation. Yep. And these young content creators are not, they're not working with, with Sony or, yep. or Warner Brothers. They're making their own money and their own projects and their own product without them. No so, middleman. Yeah, no middleman. So and now they're like, well, we've got to find a way to get these people in our doors to make product with our dollars. Yeah, and they don't, I mean, imagine what the budget is to sit at home, put a green screen behind you, and then just make something completely off of the internet and the digital world. Cost little to nothing besides the equipment to actually have. Right. That's it. Right. And you're and you're gaining and you're gaining, you know, hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions. Right. Off what you have in your own house or maybe a small, a small in garage or in in house studio compared, like you said, the the millions and millions of dollars you'd have behind you at Sony. So, mm -hmm. you know, good things could happen from this. So who knows? Um, is this something you'll see succeeding? Will will, will we see a lot of success in the ventures that come from this program, or will this be like a one and done type thing? It, it really depends on on what kind of content is created. It has to be something that people want to watch. It has to be something that people like. Uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Not raging, but but they they're they're thriving. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying though. I, I think I think the key thing here Clamoring. is clamoring. That... Yeah, you you are a little floundering a little bit there. Clamoring, clamoring. Oh, people clamoring for you were floundering too. <laughs> Had to throw that out there. Um, no, so the thing I think is that you know, like like we talked about just a few minutes ago with content creators doing what they want with their own projects. If you go to Sony or or whoever as one of these guys making their own stuff and they're limited, their hands are tied. You know, they might have the dollars, but the creativity that they're allowed to to utilize is is held in check, you're not going to get a good product. But if you allow them to take your dollars and make something truly unique, the same way that people do it on YouTube and, and Vine and whatever, then you'll get something crazy good and new. But if you go, okay, you have to do these type of things, has to be this kind of show, has to be 13 episodes or whatever, that's when you'll see it start to have them fail. Because they're not, they're not making that big budget boxed in stuff. They're making their own stuff with no limits and no limitations. Yeah. Yeah, and it is a risk reward. So you don't know whether you're in a big production company or you have someone that's just writing writing a script for you. You don't know if it's going to be big. As you pointed out, Gary, you don't know if it's going to take off. You don't know if people are going to be interested in watching this. But it's also doing more than writing a script. You have to have the imagination to bring that script to life. And we're going to talk about this in probably a second in my notes. But you know how you actually transition that to the real world or to the screen, big screen or little screen, that's what will determine if this – continues to be something that sony and everybody else will do or if this is a one and done type of thing yeah so you know to follow that up i think i think there will be moderate success i don't think we'll have any huge hits and i think this is definitely going to be a yearly thing or or bi-yearly they, they'll continue to have this program come around every every so often they won't just you know bring it out and hope for hope for the best this one time yeah and if we look at like powers powers in my opinion was a good idea it was a great idea to just have these kind of nobody's come up and essentially have these superpowers to try to to be something greater but we've already kind of seen that with um heroes and we've seen with this with a couple other smaller shows and it didn't do so well on the back end so i think if powers would have came out a little bit before heroes or maybe in a different time now it was i think it was succeeded a little bit differently and also being exclusively to playstation yeah. that's the only place you can watch i that. think that's what hurt it actually i think that's the the ultimate reason was it didn't have the scope to reach a broader audience I, I do agree with you that powers was kind of the first in this line of sony just created product that's coming directly to their consoles and nothing else not a lot of marketing there's a little bit of difference so powers was a comic well before uh oh, it really? came, yeah it was it was a comic oh. well before it became a tv show so it was created by uh industry veterans it wasn't made by by independent people 
Um, so a little, a little bit different there. Okay. But 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 by the same token, you're still right though that it was the beginning of their what they're trying to do here with this new program. So. Um, but yeah, those are our thoughts on Sony and their new filmmakers program. Let us know what you guys thought. Uh, you can reach us contact at scspodcast.net, or you can reach out to us through Twitter at Super Co-op Squad, or you use our new comment section on our website. You can go ahead and look at the details in the description of our episode that you're listening to right now. There'll be a link for our comments. Click that. It'll take you right to the comment box and go ahead and drop us a line. All right, guys. So speed run. Every week we'll break down 10 news stories and or fun facts that just didn't quite make the list for a full segment. We've got one minute per topic before we move on to the next topic. Finished or not, we gotta go fast. Just like the fastest mouse in all of Mexico. In the speed run. Really? Really? (laughs) We're doing that. Well aware of who it is. (laughs) Quicksilver will return in X-Men Dark Phoenix. Evan Peters will be reprising his role as the mutant speedster. Ah, see how they used the word mute this time? I, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because you can. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, allowed they, to. They can't they can do it. Uh, let's see, Evan Peters, that's the one from the, the past X-Men movies, right? Not, right. not uh, Jonathan Taylor Tom. No. That's Whoa. Aaron something. It's Hit a- guy. Yeah, it's, it's Taylor. Hit- Hitman. A- Aaron Taylor Johnson is what you're thinking of. Kick-ass. Was, was kick-ass. There we go. And I no, did this, it. Is, this is from the Days of Future Past line. This is not from... The one that lived past one movie. Yes, exactly. The one that lived past one movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do because the problem the problem with this character in the Days of Future Past movie was the fact that he was OP. I mean, OP. Oh, like, yeah. They had him well, doing things. They've shown him be OP in these past movies, too. Well, he's only really been in Days of Future Past. He was briefly in uh, Apocalypse, I believe. Yeah. But not much. You can't utilize him. I don't... I don't are they going to... Are they going to downscale his power? Because they made it seem like he could literally run around. Next. The Destiny fan event, Guardian Con, raised more than a million dollars for pediatric research before the convention even begins. This is awesome. That I'm a huge cool. fan, and uh, I love when people do charity streams, speedrunning streams, and anything like that that raise money for events like this, Doctors Without Borders, or anything uh, for kids' research. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, and, and to, to see that Destiny still has this kind of pool, I'm a, a little surprised about. Yeah, they, I didn't know they had their own con. A fan-made con for two days in Tampa, Florida. Guardian Con. It's cool I mean, yeah, it, it is very cool, and I do like hearing about this, but I am also a little bit stumped as to how Destiny has this big of a following still. But yeah, that's, just, that's just me, yeah, I guess. Destiny is around the corner. Uh, there, there's always been those people that kind of always hold on. Um, there's a couple of big streamers that play that game. Professor Broman, I think is his name. He he plays that game on both consoles, streams it all day. Nice. So in a lot of people's hearts, and then they're just waiting for the next big thing, which may or may not be this year's uh, Destiny. Yeah. Well, I mean, Destiny 2 is hopefully a, a big thing. So it's hopefully better than the first one. I'm sure it would. Next! Netflix has since a recently canceled and will receive a two-hour special to wrap up the show. Okay. Any of us watching this? So I have watched a few episodes. It's not my thing. I don't even know what it is. Why, why are you doing that? Why, 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 why my thing? My thing. It's my. I, I'm bringing that word back. No, you're not. Wow. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't really care for the show, but I do like the fact that Netflix is choosing to give a show that many people did like a proper send off. It's a closure. They could just not cancel it. Well, it clearly isn't good enough to continue to be, you know, renewed over and over, because Netflix is not really one to cancel very many things. Uh, doesn't that go against what what's his face just said the the CEO of Netflix that wants to cancel more things? He he does want that, but that doesn't mean that's what he's gonna get. Just because he wants it doesn't mean that's where they're gonna go. They're the CEO, aren't isn't he? I don't think you know he's, how a corporation works. He makes all the decisions. That is not what a CEO gets to do. That's why the Get Down got canceled. That is not why Get Down got canceled. I think I don't think you, I think you think CEOs have more power than they actually have. They're making all the money. They must <laughs> have all the power. Next. <laughs> Halo developer 343 Industries has given legal clearance to a Halo-based multiplayer PC fan-made game titled Installation 01. Okay, so, okay. So this is cool because, you know, most of the time we hear about indie games being made by fans, fan-made games for Mario or Zelda. Or, and they get shut down. Yeah, or Pokemon, and they get and they get shut down and canceled, and Nintendo put the ban ha- ban ha- ban hammer on, on them. You can get it. I almost got it. Or, or they, you know, they sue them so they can't make their game. And it's cool that 343 is embracing the love that fans have for their for their franchise. Yep. Oh, well, Halo's got to go somewhere. 
right? They're like, well, if we can't get it right, maybe these maybe guys. Maybe the can. fans can <laughs> for free. Yeah, so I like this a lot, and I think I think more things like this should happen. Although I understand why it can't always happen. Yeah, a lot of times the the companies are, that shut these projects down are working on their own thing, just under wraps. People don't know. Uh, that's why that uh, Super Metroid uh, yeah. fan make yeah. Yeah. got canceled. Hard. Yeah, and you know, here's here's Samus Returns coming out on the 3DS. Yeah. They have plans, and they can't tell us everything. Next. Spider-Man Homecoming 2 will be the official beginning to the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 4. Well, this is guaranteeing that there is a sequel to Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, we kind of already knew that was going to happen. We, we've known for a while. He could have died. Yeah, but it comes out this Friday. Uh, no. It's coming out. You just say that Spider-Man could have died? He could have died. I think you and I both know that what you're saying is makes no sense. Then you get Miles Morales to come in there. There you go. They already have that coming. There you go. In the Spider-Man I just, game. I just said See? they already have that coming. They could have killed own... Peter Parker and then Miles Morales would have been here. <laughs> He's literally already getting his own film. Isn't he getting an animated film? Yes, an animated film. Is it part of the MCU? It is not. Then there you go. They will not bring him to the MCU. And then maybe Doc Ock takes his mind and... That takes his body. That's what Miles I Morales is not. No, not superior. Miles Morales. Miles Morales is not the superior. I know, not who I'm talking about. You keep cutting me off. You're cutting me off because you're under the wrong impression that I'm talking about Miles Morales still. Miles Morales is not the superior Spider-Man. Doc Ock can't take his brain. Next. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Did you know your phone can now be a Game Boy? A new device called the Hyperkin Smart Boy allows your phone to be compatible with Game Boy and Game Boy Color cartridges on your smartphone. It's available for $59.99. It's going to release later this year. This is da, 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 amazing. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. It doesn't feel good when someone's cutting you this off, does it? This is awesome. This is, yeah, is, it, is it awesome? really cool. Yes, it is. I'm going to waste question. another segment. Hey, man, I'm trying. No, so essentially this is a little, I don't know, dot cradle. It slides open. You put your phone in it, and I guess it's Bluetooth tied to like your phone because it actually has buttons that you can press and it actually has a cartridge slot for your yeah, Game Boy and yeah. Game Boy Color game. I thought that was really cool when I saw that. It looks like Garrett's gonna get into mobile gaming. That wouldn't be mobile gaming. Ah, that'd be real gaming, huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be some retro thing that's not gonna still, take still off. got my cartridges up. Hyperkin makes a lot of cool stuff that's not there to make millions and millions of units. It's essentially like fan made, like the Retron systems that can play older games. So it's not something that's you're gonna see on shelves in every retail store. It's something that's you have to buy directly through them. It may come out to like mom and pop stops or GameStop online. But they make a lot of cool products that no one else does that they can license. Next. Blizzard announces a date for the remaster of the classic real-time strategy game, StarCraft, coming to a PC near you for a price to sell at $15, and will also include the Brood Wars expansion. Never played StarCraft. Uh, I don't know if it's still true, but uh, you can get StarCraft, the original, for free. Right now, I got it a couple, like maybe a month ago. Uh, so, uh, a remaster of this game, you know, updated graphics and everything would be pretty cool. I'd like to see it. Apparently, uh... Apparently. A Pericles. Yep. Apparently, you can play this in 4K. Brother 4K of resolution. Philosophies. <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're the RTS guy, Johnny. What do you think? Is uh, it? I, I do like RTSs a lot. Okay. Um, more, more, uh, more actually turn-based strategy. But this is cool. I'm not a big StarCraft guy just because the competitive side of it in Korea is ridiculous. How about you just don't play competitive and just play the game? There's a whole campaign. Yeah, that'll take me about five hours. I mean, you, may, you, you, can play, you play as three different races. Have, each, have... each race has its own campaign. Plus, there's also an expansion. And uh, you can also... <laughs> have you played StarCraft? I have played StarCraft. It's ridiculously easy to do that in the campaign. Next! 20th Century Fox has confirmed that an additional six more Marvel films will be released over the next four years. While rumors are flying, no franchises or sequels have been confirmed. Johnny, is this one of those why do you gotta tell me this type of scenario? Nope, this is an I don't care kind of scenario because I don't think Fox is gonna do any kind of justice to any of these Marvel films. No. No, they're not. Deadpool. Yeah, I knew okay. you were gonna say that, and That's great a good for one. you. You you made one great film, and then you did do great with Days of Future Past. So did they? Yeah, Days of Future Past. It was six. Yeah, you took six X Men films, and you got one right. You're going one for six. But they immediately dropped it in Apocalypse. And I guess he did get Logan, but again, there there's been three Wolverine standalone films. It took you one out of three. 
the odds aren't so good for my in my opinion. Um, uh, I'm maybe a Ghost Rider reboot. I I just don't care what they do at That's this Fox. point. That is Fox. Just give just give the properties back to Marvel and Disney and let them handle them correctly. Yeah, but then Sony or sorry, Fox doesn't make money off that. Well, Sony doesn't either. Sony's making some <laughs> kind of deal, so you know, make a deal. Are we make a bargain. Another Fantastic Next. Four. Warner Brothers has confirmed that over 20 shows and movies will appear at this year's San Diego Comic Con, including four of the Arrow or the four Arrowverse shows, Big Bang Theory and Black Lightning. Hey, don't forget about Young Justice. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait for it to come. Yep, they watched Young Justice. Yes, I did. Why, are, how already... dare you look at me like I have not seen Young Justice? Well, you've never watched the, the, Avatar, the Avatar: The Last Airbender. So. So I, I count those in the same kind of realm, personally. I've seen Young Justice multiple times. Yeah. Good. It is awesome. It is fantastic. They've already finished five episodes, so it's actually happening. This is a thing. Dude, I don't think they have all the voice actors, but no. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they do. Uh, they have a lot of stuff coming to this year, so I'm hoping they show a lot of new cool trailers, information, like new stuff we haven't seen. There's new stuff. They're, re- they're also bringing back some more stuff. Uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is yes, being Blu-ray. re-released on the Blu-ray. Exciting. That's going to be cool. I would love to see a Blu-ray uh, animated series collection. Right. It's an excellent film. Phantasm. I like it. It is. There's also a Funko Pop of Phantasm. Nice. That's cool. Got nothing, Johnny? No, no? Nope. Everything that needs to be said was said. Okay. Well. Next. Netflix drops a trailer for their live-action remake of Death Note, releasing this fall. Okay, guys, hear me out. Hear me out. You uh, must, you, uh, must, uh, anyway, uh, so the the trailer makes the movie look kind of eh, but Willem Dafoe as Ryuk is a fantastic choice, in my opinion. I've never seen Death Note, so... Uh... Yeah, uh, three. No, no, no. You watched Young Justice. Okay, two, two, two out of two out of three. Yeah, you need to. Have, you seen, Death Note? Have yes. you seen Death Note, Johnny? Yes, I'm quite a Death Note fan. Well, I'm not looking at you all snarky like you're looking at me right now. I just asked a question. Because you need to watch <laughs> Death Note and Avatar: the Last Airbender. Sometimes I don't think things need to be remade, and I feel like this is one of those things. Sometimes things are good to be remade, and it's cool. There's just too many opportunities to mess up this classic anime, and there's no need for it. Have you watched the trailer? I have not. I don't okay. think so. I thought the trailer was cool, though. I think it'll be it'll be fun to see, and again, Willem Dafoe is going to knock it off the park as we get in. All right, guys. Well, that is our speedrun for this week. If you have your own thoughts on the speedrun topics, feel free to email us, contact at scspodcast.net, or reach out to us on Twitter at Super Co-op Squad and let us know your thoughts on this week's speedrun. So our final game segment, guys, name that game. So every week, one of the hosts gives clues that all lead to one game and one game only, while the other two hosts race to guess the game before before their opponent. How fast can you name that game? So I went down last week. Uh, rough week for me there. <sighs> Didn't like losing that way, but it happened. <laughs> so here I am. You and mean uh, losing fair? Garrett. Well, I, I've never, I, I know nothing about Shadow Complex. So that was the title that did me in and I don't even know anything. But that's, it happens. It happens as well. Might happen to one of you this week. I recommend you play that game. No, don't wow. recommend. Wow. We'll, we'll get into that. We got some <laughs> nice emails. All right, guys. Well, this is my week for the name that game. So this is your first time doing this, right? This is my first time. Yeah, Garrett won last week. Joshua, you are the challenger. Uh, let's see what you guys got. Here we go. So this is a game. Cards are your most dangerous enemy. Burnout. Nope. Frogger. He got it in one. That's correct. All right. Game. <laughs> <laughs> you got time to think about it. I name, just rushed to the answer. Name that game number two. This game is all in the skies. This guy's working. No. 1942. No. <laughs> I was so mad you got it again on the first try. <laughs> it's a game where battles happen ruggedly throughout the air. Crimson Skies? No. 1943? No. <laughs> combat is the name of the Ace game. Combat. Ace Combat. That's, that's two for, it took you three, <laughs> three things to get it. 
All right, last name that game. This game is about you healing the world. Final Fantasy VII. No. Okami. No. Specifically, you go through the oceans of the world. Star Ocean. No. Echo the Dolphin. Ding! <laughs> Echo the Dolphin. So that still leaves Garrett in the lead, though. Two to one. So you went down swinging, JG. You got one. But Garrett, you are the name that game champion for a second week in a row. You win. Combat <laughs> is the name of the game. And yet you still didn't get it, did no you? No <laughs> you, But you didn't catch it in time. I'm not, dis- I'm not disagreeing or arguing that fact. He literally <laughs> said the game and described it. I did. Hey, come on. That Frogger one was pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, you got that pretty quickly. I didn't think you'd get it that quick. All right, guys. Well, that is Name That Game. Let us know how you did uh, by emailing or texting or tweeting at us. And uh, give us some themes for next week. You can do that by reaching out contact at SESpodcast.net. So listener mail. So uh, first one, I, I like this guy. Actually, actually, I like both these guys. You can read them. No, <laughs> I can read them if you'd like. But uh, Garrett, traditionally, you read email number one, so you can read that if you'd like, or I could take it. I'll, I'll read it. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team. Email number one is from Rodney. Rodney says, It's impossible to have must-play games. There are too many games. I'm 22, and I game over 20 hours a week, and there's no way I can go back and play all of those classic games you guys talk about and keep up with the new stuff to prevent having an even bigger backlog. I can never go back and play every Pokemon game, every Final Fantasy, every Zelda game, Fallout, Dead Space, Bioshock, Mass Effect, Elder Scrolls, Mario, Dragon Quest, Call of Duty, and on and on and on it goes since everyone is going to have their own must-play games. Sorry, but you two are wrong this time, meaning Joshua and myself. Uh, you just got to cut losses and play what you can. When you can find, uh, when you can find, and if someone happened to experience it, good for them. If they didn't, then que sera, sera. Thanks, Rodney. Have my back. I get ripped up by you guys sometimes, but this time you guys got me. No respect. No respect. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I know you guys don't agree, but I, I, I think this is how it is. There's just too many games. There's no game that you can consider must play because there's just, there's just too much. I mean, not everyone's asking you to play every Pokemon game. Play Red. Actually, no. Play, play there, there Silver. There you go, though. See? Play Some, Silver. You say that. I agree with you, however. I think Silver is the best one. <laughs> but someone else is going to say play red. And then someone 10 years younger than us is going to say no, heart gold and sold silver. Someone else is going to say no, X and Y. So it just it just never stops. Don't listen to everybody. Just, just pick one. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to pick one. Okay, cool. Uh, and then this is from, from an old buddy of us, a you know, uh, long time, longest time listener. Yeah. So, uh, Amongst the first. Electronic mail number two. JG, go ahead, read that out. What's up? Chandler says, I happen to agree with Johnny over Joshua and Garrett on this one. Must play or much must play or must watch would indicate to me that it is suggested that if you haven't played X game or watched X movie, that your journey as a gamer or movie watcher will be incomplete. Now, I do have some top movies that I recommend. However, when I hear that someone likes movies in the same vein that I do, then they have must watch movies. They love X genre, and in my opinion, X movie belongs in their repertoire as a great movie. But it's time I chime. It's time I chime in on Johnny's behalf. Keep up the podcast. I rate it nine out of ten only because I want longer episodes because I'm selfish. Well, thanks, thanks, Chandler. I agree with that. We should have longer episodes. I I think we're good, but <laughs> <laughs> I will say, Chandler, I appreciate you having my back, man, because you. You, you've, you've gone toe-to-toe with me a few times before. And, um, yeah, so very nice. Three, I believe. Wow. Um, so, guys, thank you for the emails. We appreciate it. As always, we appreciate every single person that reaches out to us on any platform, uh, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, uh, emails, or, or whatever, guys. You know, we appreciate it, and uh, we'll hopefully get to all of you as quickly as we can. We can't get to every email, but we will get through them as we can. Must be a happy man. Not everybody sides with you. Yeah, it's in true. a collective. They re- they truly don't. I'm I'm not always not always uh with the majority. So before we move on, we had our listener question last week. Now we didn't have an email 
uh, that we read on air specifically about it. But last week's listener question was, what is your favorite fighting game song? Soundtrack. In my opinion, the game with the best fighting game music to this day. Hold on. Hold on. I know the game. I don't know if you do. I think I do. Is it Dissidia? No. I've never played that game. Good. It's Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Wrong, but oh, wow. a strong contender. No, but hey, that does have some good music. But no, I pick Killer Instinct back on the Super NES. Killer. It came when I got when I got my system. My dad bought me the system that came with Killer Instinct and came with Killer Cuts. Killer Cuts. Yep, a CD of all the stage music and everything. I love that soundtrack. Yeah, that Joshua. beat is rare. <laughs> what do you have, Joshua? <laughs> Hands down, Street Fighter. Specific one or? Well, I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay. No, okay. I do have to narrow it down to a game. So there's been many renditions <laughs> of Street Fighter music. Yeah, that's why I was curious. But classic Street Fighter two. Okay. Like nice. awesome theme music for almost every character. Uh, Ken's stage is really good. Ryu's is classic. One of my favorites is Cammy. Cammy's a good theme, one. Uh, which is Super Street Fighter two. Uh, Turbo and then Guile. <laughs> Guile, you uh. Goes with everything. Gal is Gal's chill music. So Street Fighter Two. I I would say that that the the Ken stage that song is just like that's a badass song. Like I I literally have not at this point, but I had it on my podcast. That and actually actually a few of them Vegas theme song as well. But that. so bad <laughs> yeah that i mean i could just pump the weight to that yeah, like, yeah. And, I, and i feel ken's like fire like i gotta be better than you, you <laughs> Try gotta, you gotta can. keep working so that's a good one joshua it's uh, in smash brothers too it's awesome it is it is in smash <laughs> brothers uh mine um as you may have guessed is marvel vs. capcom 2 some good music in that there. had not because not because the songs are great they are but the songs are so uniquely different than anything you get in other fighting games. They don't feel like fighting game songs. I want to take you for a ride. Um, yeah, so it was just fun, man. And then the, the saddest thing for me is how great that was. And then Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Going into the crap hole of songs from Marvel vs. Cap, Capcom 3. That disappointed me the most it was uh, very, from that game. Yeah. It was the music. It was just character themes and remixes. There are BGMs in there, but they're not that great. It's not the same. Not the same. Huh. Ironically, MVC2 has, like, what, eight or nine tracks? They're just, they're just sick, though. <laughs> um, Each one's great. The training uh, the training song is my personal favorite from that game. Yeah, they are, there are some good ones. Whatever the Clock Tower one Oh, is. the Clock Tower one's good, too. I Second think, choice. I think the Carnival stage is probably one of my favorites. They're all good. They really are. They're good. all good. They are really good. Um, cool. Well, that is our... All right, well, that is our uh, our listener question from last week. So next week's listener question, which character from any game, movie, and anything pop culture, and any media needs to be a pop figure that has not yet been made into a pop figurine? Mm. So which which character have you been waiting? Just pop, Funko, make it into a, make it into a figure, and you're, you're just waiting for it to be done. I like it. All right, so that's next week's listener question. You can uh, let us know what you thought. Uh, again, Contact at scspodcast.net for email on Twitter at Super Co-op Squad, or you can reach out to us in the comment section on our website, uh, scspodcast.com. You can also find that comment link in our details and description of this episode. Click that link. It'll take you right to it. All right, so passing the controller. What's going on with each of us outside the world of the podcast? So last week, Joshua, what controller did you give me, sir? I gave you a busted ass PS1 controller. The thumbsticks are worn off. The start buttons ripped off. The triggers don't work, and it's attached to a grimy PlayStation 2 fat cockroach. And can't, by, the, by the way, great memory. Yeah, I mean, it was his, <laughs> his thing there. So uh, yeah, I, as I as I said before, um, Garrett, you'll be getting something worse every time Josh hits me. I'm gonna hit you harder. Disc trays ripped off. So you can't give me a console. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. This is not this is not my choice. It kind of is. No, it's, jo- it's Joshua's <laughs> choice. All right. Well, um, for me, I, I had a lot going on this week. But you know what? It wasn't even something going on that actually stood out to me. I'm going to tell a story. 
So a story, the story, story time. Yeah, it's the story time. The story. <laughs> was that blue? Yes, it was. So the story is, uh, I, ha- I have work, and every day outside of work, whenever I leave leave work or or, or go out out to go get something to eat or whatever, there is this guy that works a kiosk. And what he sells at this kiosk doesn't matter, but I see this guy fidget spinners. <laughs> no, <laughs> for the story, it should be fidget spinners. <laughs> so I see this guy every day. And you know, this has been for months and months, and you know people walk by him, they go to out to eat or whatever, and he's just there selling his stuff, and you know he's just there. And in between work, I've seen him; he's just sitting there when there's no one paying him any attention, just on his phone or listening to music, and he's there every day, probably six or seven days a week. And last week, you know, for the first time, I was just walking back with my lunch, walking back into the building, and you know I saw him. I said, "Hey, what's up, man?" And he didn't register for a second. And he looked at me all of a sudden, like his eyes brightened up and he kind of, you know, poked his head up and looked around and saw him. I was like, hey, what's up, man? He just was surprised that someone spoke to him and then was happy to have some human contact. And, you know, the next day I go out and same thing and I see him and he says hi to me. And I say hi, we chat for a second. And this continues for about a week. And now he he will he will I when I whenever the door whenever I leave whenever someone walks out he he's actively looking to see if it's me, and it's funny because I, it made me realize in in a, in a in a nice way that one small act from a person can be like a really cool thing for someone else's day. Like this guy has you know, he's at work and people just walk by him, don't give him the time of day. He's a salesman; they just pretend he doesn't exist, and he's he's been working who knows how long at that kiosk. And that's just how he, how life is. And just by me saying hello, it brightened up his day to where now he has, even though it's a small thing, something to look forward to every day. And I, I really liked the fact that I, you know, just that one bit of kindness from me was, was nice. So that was, that was my thing. So you found a Kip Drodry. A what? Facebook friend, South Park. He had no friends, but <laughs> Kyle was his friend. And that's all he did. <laughs> I suppose I did. But yeah, it really it really stuck home with me that how much it made a difference in this guy's day, even for that brief moment. Hey mom, can I go to the movies with Johnny? You're making Johnny light. like this. You're making light <laughs> of my of my moment. But yeah, I really felt good that that, that meant a, that made a difference. Oh. Uh and and more more importantly, more more uh more specifically for me, uh my sister is back in town. She's uh going to the University of Hawaii um so hey bray out there um so she's she's out here spending some time with us for about two weeks or so so it's awesome to have my baby sister here uh in town and she'll actually be guest appearing on our podcast next week so stay tuned for that ladies and gentlemen i don't know if i could take two of you johnny that's rough well you're gonna have to so so deal with it um so that is that is me for this week all right garrett you ready okay i don't know if it can get any worse than last week no, last, last week was pretty week, gross. Last week, Garrett, I gave you a controller, Xbox 360 controller. Yep. That was just packed to the gills with Cheeto dust and crumbs all over it. Just Cheetos yep. on every controller piece, all mushed into the buttons, all that stuff. Looked like it came straight out of Chester Cheeto's ass. <laughs> <laughs> pretty you, much. Did you throw it in the washer with your clothes? Nope. This week, Garrett, Didn't touch it. you get an Xbox One controller. Looks perfectly good. But... But... Every time that you press a button, nothing happens. Once every one out of five times, a button a button works. So you're playing the game, trying to do an attack or shoot, and nothing happens. And then once it happens one time, then it doesn't happen next time. Your your controller is just screwed up. That's it. Okay. Well, luckily, I won't be playing my Xbox One because I'm still playing Zelda. <laughs> uh, fantastic game. I, I say it every week. Can. Say it every week. That game is is freaking fun. Um, but not too much on that. I had the fortunate opportunity to watch a terrible, terrible movie called The Room. If you guys get the, this is one of those movies where it was low budget. The guy thought he was making a great movie and it just fell apart everywhere. The acting was bad. The story made no sense. Camera angles made no sense. Cutting and edits were god awful. It was a hilarious watch. Is that the one with the two girls trapped in that bedroom? No, or? no, it actually is not. It's um, it's about a guy who is about to marry a woman, 
but as soon as he leaves the, the, the apartment, she starts having sex with his best friend. And then it goes into a, well, are they best friends? They're still acting like best friends. And where'd this guy come from? He, this makes no sense. 20 minutes in the movie and there's a third sex scene. Three. Sounds like that's right up your alley. What's the problem? It, 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 was, it was funny. It was the lines are are poorly delivered. It, it, it's like a poor porno. No, there 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 was not that much nudity. Anyway, uh, so that was actually just funny to watch. Uh, cars today. Watch Cars three. I liked it, but I thought it was it, it was. I don't know. It was still enjoyable to watch. I'm glad the ending was what the ending was, and it wasn't just another repeat of Cars one. Uh, I actually liked it. But other than that, I'm still just playing Injustice Zelda. Question. Yes. Have you played any of the DLC? I know it came out like a day or two ago. Um, I have not. Since I haven't really done much with the story, I'm trying not to touch the DLC. I know there's the Master Sword uh, trial. trial. Um, yeah, Trials of the Sword. Yes, but I've actually just been kind of looking around for the uh, DLC items. I got the Korok Mask. Nice. So I can, whenever I'm near a Korok, my, my mask shakes and makes a little noise. And I just got to figure it out. But uh, uh, other than that, I'm also happy that Bray is here from Hawaii. She's going to the University of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> She's stopping by for a couple of weeks. So it's good to see her again. And that, that is me. So, Joshua. I just want to point out that it'd probably be best for you to hit him hard because he won't stop hitting me. I won't stop hitting you. So if you start hitting him, maybe this cycle will end at some point. Or maybe it won't because now he's hitting me. Maybe this as long if when you leave me alone, then I, I already leave him know alone. what I'm gonna give him. All right. I know what I'm gonna give Johnny. All right. Anyway, Joshua, I'm just you're getting a regular old Wiimote. <laughs> it's just a Wiimote. I'm waiting for the catch. No catch. It has a wrist strap. It, oh, it, it's that's got, the it's, most important part. I got to protect my TV. It's got the Motion Plus that comes in that little gel cover. Oh, the, the skin grip. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you're good to go, man. Cool. Play, it's nice. play, play some Twilight Princess, maybe. Ooh. The launch title. That's it. No, no, that, no, no okay. there's no catch. It's just a Wii moment. <laughs> I, like, I feel like there's more to it. Not everything has to be vindictive. I feel like it's gonna explode <laughs> 20 minutes into my game. All right, so a uh, couple things on news. I am excited to go to Evo. I said that, but we got about a week and a half uh, left. So I got an email a few days ago saying that there's only one more day you can register for games. And when I read the email, it was like 30 minutes left in the day. I, I saw it at 11.30 and I said, hmm, do I really want to play Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3? Eh, I guess so. I pitched in my <laughs> ten bucks. I was like, let me get some more. Let me get some more playtime because now I'm doing Street Fighter V, Ultimate Marvel, and Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers this year probably being the one I'll do the best in. Thanks, guys. You guys have been my training partners for the last year. No problem, buddy. Been taking the ass whoopings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm dishing them out too. Just not every day. Uh, your name is going to get a Blu-ray release uh, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's also going to yeah. get uh, both versions uh, in Japanese and the uh, and English, English? Uh, dub version. Do you have a kind of uh, release window or something? No, but they just did sometime later this year? Yeah. So oh, man, I'm looking forward cool. to picking that up. That's going to be great. I'm waiting for it. Uh, I've been playing the hell out of Next Machina. Nice. I just need one more, one more trophy to platinum it. And it yeah. requires local co-op. And I don't have any... Other, anybody else to play with and I don't I, and I don't I, have a second controller so I can't on. get the trophy you were about to say and I don't have any friends <laughs> no I don't, I don't have no anybody to play with that's, Kip that's, the, same, that's the same thing Jordy <laughs> the, the last the last trophy requires local co-op I don't have any friends <laughs> speaking of with Johnny did you, did you ever get that achievement in Sonic uh Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I did 2. ask. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> there is a multiplayer one where I think you have to win, what, 10 times or something like that? Right. And we, we were just going to throw it, kind of like, all right, well, you know, you let me get my wins first, and I'll let you get your wins first. The giant's like, no, no, I'll get my wins first, then you get your wins. <laughs> so we just didn't do it. Uh, but you, you got it later on. I, I still don't have it. 
So yeah, that's pretty uh, funny. I, I I don't want to say I've mastered the game, but I've learned a lot of the ins and outs. I still cannot beat the final uh, the final hidden boss, so to speak. I'm kind of learning that, and I think I'll give it another week, and then I'll move on to something else because. There's so much more out there that I can play. Maybe move on back to some injustice. Uh, maybe, maybe. I still got that in the back burner. And uh, Spider-Man is coming out this weekend. Highly excited for yes. it. I'm surprised. Uh, not I'm surprised. I'm looking forward to see if T-Mobile does another $4 movie ticket thing. I'm hoping. Since we have T-Mobile service. And if hope, if hoping so, that's going to be another $4 movie for us. Yes. Um, that's all I really have this week. Nothing crazy exciting. Just evil, evil, evil. Highly looking forward to it. Um... What else? Oh, yeah. Since we're all on the, the hype train for Bray. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not getting shot in the back to, to, to shout her name. But Bray's here. Looking forward to seeing, seeing Bray. She's hiding somewhere. She, she doesn't want to see me. I heard she changed her color to, hair color to mine. Looking forward to seeing that. Okay. Now, since we all moved along from the Bray train. Johnny, guess what you're going to get this week? You can end this vicious cycle joshua since you don't know the difference between a controller and a system and oh they don't go together and this and this and that you're just gonna get an ouya oh okay. no so is the ouya a controller or is it a system is it a console what is it all of it, it exactly so you can't tell me oh it's not a controller you can't give it to me okay just a plain old ouya you get an ouya all right man the uh, cycle uh, ends i mean i'm assuming i'm guessing it comes with games i don't know i didn't i didn't oh, look fine. at the box i said it, it does not does it really not come with it any games? It does not come with games. You have to buy them. Or like digital? They're all digital. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. You get an Ouya. Thank you. O-U-Y-A. Yeah. I can spell. O-U-J. <laughs> I think it's O-U-J-A. Ah. O-U-Y-A. That, yeah, it's actually, that's how it's Okay. Called. It's kind of weird, but yep, there you go. Thank you, sir. Is it by Mad yep. Cats or by Amazon? It's by Ouya. No, it's like from somebody. Well, like though. you know how like Nvidia has their shield. Nvidia. That's like Nvidia uh -huh. shield. This is just Ouya. It's, it's Ouya gaming console. Like that. That's it. All right, guys. Well, that is our show for this week. As always, thank you very much for listening to our show. If there's anyone out there that you think would love the show, make sure you let them know, guys. Help extend the reach of the Super Co-op Squad podcast. Help us find a new audience and help us find some people that would really generally just love to hear what we're talking about and love to interact with us the same way that you guys do. Um, as always, you can reach me, uh, Johnny Mac, on uh, Twitter, social media individually on uh, at Johnny Mac 24. You can reach me at GJL3275. That's on Twitter. And say hi to me, Joshua underscore four underscore life. All right, guys. So as always, we again, once again, thank you for listening and we will see you next week. As always, I'm Johnny Mac. I'm still Garrett. And I will always be Joshua. Except when he's Josh. <laughs>